In India, there is a job where they use their hands to clean up human poop. Without any safety precautions, the workers have to walk through the sewers. Yes, the job is known as a pooper scooper. And all the people who do it are from India's lowest level, the Dalits. According to statistics, more than 600 people die every year. How difficult is this job for the so-called peasant of India? Is it really impossible to change their fate? Hello, welcome to The Weird Side. Today, I am taking you to Mumbai, the most populated city in India. Let's find out what it's like to be a manure scavenger in Mumbai. Mumbai, a city of 20 million people, produces 2 billion liters of wastewater every day. The city only employs 30,000 cleaners to deal with it. That's an average of 6 to 6,000 liters per day per worker. The water is knee-deep in the 200 kilometers of sacks, so deep that the boots are basically useless, the water still runs into your boots. This is Lao Jiu, a 54-year-old veteran cleaner who has been in the business for more than 20 years and has never received any professional training. As far as he was concerned, as long as you have a pair of hands, you can do the job. It's all about whether you can resist the smell. After all, it's a terrible environment. Here you smell 100 times worse than in a rubbish dump. There are not only feces under your feet, but also broken glass and used syringes. If you get cut, it could be life-threatening. The workers here are not very well educated. Many of them have not even finished primary school. 19 years old Shu dropped out of school in the fifth grade. He had a girlfriend, but he was afraid to tell her about his job. The open ditch seems unbearable, but it's the spillways and sewers that are the main part of the job, and also the ones that are more life-threatening. In the last two years alone, 1,200 workers have passed away inside the spillways. The government turned a blind eye when the deaths were reported by the relevant authorities in the hope that the families of the victims would be compensated. They did not seek any solutions. They just let things happen. There's money for roads and bridges, but not for sewers. It seems like a deliberate attempt not to solve the problem, and it itself is already a big problem. In a closed environment, the levels of methane, ammonia, etc. can rise significantly. This can lead to low oxygen levels, which can easily lead to death by hypoxia. In such a hostile environment, workers are protected by extremely simple measures. Helmets, boots and masks, and that's all they have. And even these are not enough for every worker. In a company of 100 people, there are only two or three pairs of gloves and five to 10 pairs of boots. When a supervisor comes to inspect, one worker will be told to dress up and put on a look. It's not uncommon for shoe sizes to not fit. They are forced to wear smaller shoes or else they will be fired. As there is a saying, no contrast and no harm. In Hong Kong for the same job, not only do workers need to undergo more than two years of comprehensive training and obtain 15 certifications, but they also be issued with protective equipment with oxygen tank. The bare-chested man is called Sora. He appears to be numb to the filth of the sewers and can dive into the sewage to clean up the rubbish without a pout. The air is filled with the smell of methane, thick layer of rubbish, plastic bags, and sludge float on the surface. Saurav smiles, he has accepted his fate. In India, most of the people who work here are poor, uneducated Dalits. The caste system in India is divided into four classes. At the top are the Brahmins, then the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas, at the bottom was the Sudras, and the Dalits were outside of the system. Commonly known as the outcast, the untouchables, and have been oppressed for thousands of years. India's constitution prohibits caste discrimination, but the law is just a piece of thin paper. In India, 71% of the majority of the decent occupations are occupied by high caste men. Even though high castes make up only 8.5% of India's population, if Dalit persists in their studies, could they have changed their destiny? Sunni Dalit caste is a PhD student at the Tata Institute. He holds a Bachelor of Commerce, Journalism, a Master of Arts in Globalization and Labor, Master of Social Work, a PhD in Social Work and a Doctor of Philosophy, making a total of six degrees. But still, he is one of the 30,000 laborers. Why on earth is this happening? Couldn't he have found a better job? Sunil tells us the answer. Not all Dalits work as cleaners, but all cleaners are Dalits. Three generations of Sunni's family have been cleaners, and from the moment he was born here, his destiny seemed to be determined. Sunil's father was a drug addict, an alcoholic and a domestic abuser, the norm for all cleaners. It was only through the paralysis of alcohol and drugs that they were able to face the shit and get rid of the stress of the day. 
So the life expectancy of these cleaners is generally short, but perhaps it's a good thing for them. The first day of work was very painful for Suno. The stench on his hands wouldn't go away for three days. This fear motivated him to study hard, but as he dig deeper into the society, Suno discovered something desperate if more and more people like himself were to get good jobs. The people in the system would therefore suppress those Dalits who'd try to be better. They won't allow the lowlifes to get ahead of themselves. In order for more children to have the opportunity to learn, Suno has given up the bright future he was seeking. In fact, back in 2014, the highest court in India banned manual scavenging labor. In other words, it is illegal for contractors to force workers to pull out feces. But the funny thing is that these contractors are hired by the government. In view of this, the journalist decided to consult the BMC, India's richest municipal corporation. After specifying their need for an interview, they waited for half a month without any response. The BMC put them in touch with the chief engineer, the chief engineer, who then put them in touch with another engineer. Everyone was kicking the can down the road, and no one was willing to take responsibility for it. In here, individual achievement is tied to one's social status and class, and caste privilege discrimination are deeply rooted in their society. People are not born equal here. Your birth determines your subsequent life. All that can be said is that this society is sick, and it's near impossible to heal it. Thanks for watching this far. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to this channel and like the video. We'll see you in the next video.